Ladies and gentlemen, I have breaking news coming from the comment section of my last Chucky video. Turns out last week's episode of Chucky was one of the highest rated episodes of the entire season on different platforms such as IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes. So basically because my opinion doesn't match the majority, it is invalid. Good thing for me, I'm not here to tell people what they want to hear, I'm here to deliver the truth. Let's discuss. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So episode 5 of Chucky season 2 was an improvement over last week's episode, which isn't really saying a whole lot. No, you, you're okay. This one, real fucking ugly. The episode begins with swole Chucky versus good Chucky. The funny thing about that idea is that I think it could have been very interesting. Seeing a more virtuous and kind Chucky defending the kid's honor, even if it's only momentarily, could have been a nice little wrinkle to this show if it was properly executed. It could have been a nice change of pace and we get to see Chucky in a different light that we don't typically see him in. The biggest issue with the storyline for me is that Jake is almost obsessively defending good Chucky every chance that he gets. And this is creating more drama between him and Devin. And I'm just kind of already over the back and forth between these two characters already. I don't give a fuck. A big part of that is that I was never really invested in their relationship to begin with, so it's really difficult for me to care when they're actually going through issues. And by the way, I'm completely Team Devin in this situation. To me, he continues to be the most consistently rational character in this show. If it was me, I wouldn't care if Chucky was baking me fucking cookies every day. His track record and history of being manipulative will always make me not trust him. That makes sense. It's also kind of surprising to me and jarring that Jake is so accepting of good Chucky. Because you could argue that no one has suffered more at the hands of Chucky than Jake. But this is starting to feel like this is Jake making bad decisions again that will ultimately get people killed. Anyway, throughout the episode, good Chucky claims to be the Chucky that he chooses to be, and not the one that he's destined to be. Get it everyone? It's that commentary thing we always talk about again. Good Chucky ends up defeating Swole Chucky, somehow, and Jake of course is very thankful that he rescued them from Swole Chucky. Meanwhile, Devin is still disgusted with this whole situation, and I can't say I blame him. One other minor issue that I do see with this whole Good Chucky scenario is that it feels like they're trying to make Chucky a somewhat sympathetic or misunderstood character. And I'm just at the point where I'm tired of this whole new trend where we're not letting villains be villains. So say good night to the bad guy. Meanwhile, Lexi and Nadine are on Trevor cleanup duty, and they put his body in the closet and it later goes missing and no one really knows what happened to it. So Trevor is officially out of the closet. The joke writes itself. Also, I can't say that I'm really buying into the whole Lexi and Nadine friendship, probably because I can't fathom a situation where anyone would take a liking to someone like Lexi. Because from the very beginning of this show, she's just been so unlikable to me. But you one crazy ass bitch. And no kind of redemption story is really going to change my mind about her. But I guess Nadine's whole purpose in this show is that she is accepting of everyone, no matter what. Father Bryce ends up punishing Devin because he finds Devin in the room where Swole Chucky is stuck to the wall with knives. This is where Father Bryce starts to believe that these kids that just arrived are more evil than he originally thought. I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. It's going beyond his disapproval of their sexuality. Now he truly believes that there is something satanic going on here. He punishes Devin by making him read the Bible. And of course Devin comes across this passage about how men shouldn't lay with other men. Devin gets visibly upset, he starts ripping pages out of the Bible and even throws the Bible at a cross. And this pretty much drives home the anti-religion angle that we always know was coming with this show when we learned of its setting. This show is predictable if nothing else. No. We have a little confrontation later on in the episode where Devin tells Good Chucky exactly what he thinks about him and what he thinks he is capable of. This upsets Good Chucky and he ends up running away in an unintentionally hilarious fashion. I mean, it was a very obvious stunt double and it just looked very comical to me. Jake goes after Good Chucky and of course tries to console him because again, he's obsessed. And this is where Jake tells Good Chucky about the story of Charles Lee Ray. 
stop being a bitch and come on. At this point in the show, it feels like we're so far removed from the origins of Chucky that it felt like he was telling him a story out of a book rather than something that actually happened in this universe. Jake ultimately convinces good Chucky that he's not like the other Chuckies. He's different. He has good in him. And he and Nadine even go as far as to baptize the doll. Which seems kind of strange considering Jake's resistance to religion up until this point, but we'll move on. And you two motherfuckers need Jesus. The idea is that this is removing all evil that could potentially be inside of this doll. Devin, along with the rest of the audience, come to the conclusion that Jake might be a lost cause at this point, so he and Lexi decide to follow up on a lead that they do not tell Jake about, by the way, that leads them to this cabin in the woods where a very alive Andy is currently residing. Yeah, I called this one when they very obviously hinted at it, with very clunky exposition they delivered earlier this season. Man, I'm tired of being right. There's also more drama between Glenda and Tiffany in this episode. That is honestly the least interesting thing about the show to me. Glenda is starting to realize who she really is, as well as who her mother is and what she is capable of. And she appears to be very conflicted about all of that. All of this concludes with Tiffany murdering Jennifer Tilly's sister in front of her because Jennifer Tilly is still trapped inside of the Tiffany doll. And Tiffany, Jennifer, Glenda, and Glenn and Glenda's doll eventually leave the house in search of Glenn and Nika. A what? This whole portion of the show just seems so convoluted and unnecessary to me. Couple that with the pretty atrocious, over-the-top acting that we get from Jennifer Tilly every single week. I would have preferred that when making this show, they just ignored this whole aspect of Chucky lore. I would have preferred if they just kept the focus on Chucky a bit more. I just really don't care about any of these characters unless Nika is in the picture. And by the way, I do believe that Nika has been one of the strongest aspects of this show up until this point. But she wasn't even in this episode. Fuck me, right? It should also be noted that Swole Chucky does eventually reemerge, and a nun thinks that he's Jesus reincarnated for reasons, I guess, and she becomes a loyal follower of his. This kind of felt like it came out of left field, but most things in this show do. This show, once again, feels like it's all over the place and trying to do way too much. There's too many storylines that I just don't care about and not enough horror moments to keep me entertained. All of this made for yet another underwhelming episode that feels like it's a part of a show that is going absolutely nowhere. It's fine, trust me. No, listen. This type of thing happens to me all the time, unfortunately. Yes, people get very upset about opinions lately. It's just some troll on the internet. They're not going to do anything. I understand. Yes, I'll be careful, I promise. All right. Bye. Who the hell are you? I am the good guy. What do you want from me? I'm gonna teach you some respect. Y'all be cool. Right on.